<laughs> okay, welcome back to Zimbalk. This is uh, going to be episode three here, and uh, we have just started fishing here. Level seven, just this is where we left off at the end of the last episode. I just got my lines in. It's overnight hours, so, you know, it is what it is. We will suffer through and see if we can catch a couple fish before daylight. Um, and basically what we're working on right now is getting a little bit more silver so we can afford to put our second feeder line together get rid of this bamboo rod which is honestly just pretty much driving me crazy at this point um it definitely feels like it's time to say goodbye to the bamboo rod and again we're down to 13 worms so one thing we may do here to save a little bit of silver is go ahead and travel back to the cottage pond and uh, let's see if we can catch one more fish on the feeder before we do so. Get some free worms and then we will be all set for another day of fishing here. Yeah, the main goal is um, yeah, to get the second feeder line. And once we do that and get a little bit of silver, we'll probably head over to winding. I'm not sure if that will be in this episode. It just depends on how quickly those things happen. Um, we're certainly not... Uh, we're certainly you know need a lot of silver here so need five silver just to travel we still need a little bit of silver to finish purchasing what we need for the feeder line that we're putting together so okay maybe this will be the final fish here before we take off to the cottage pond is that a sleeper might be a big one yeah that is a big sleeper okay so let's do that real quick so you don't know which you should know at this point if you click on the map you can then choose where you want to travel going back and forth between the cottage pond and, and uh, mosquito lake is actually free so those are the two places you can travel for free after that you do have to start paying silver so you need to sort of plan your trip in mind in terms of um, at least staying there long enough to make up for the travel cost and at the cottage pond all we're really wanting to do here is hitting Y at the house gets you spare tackle, which we have succeeded. And we'll make sure that the worm number increased. Yep, we got 30 more worms. We still have a few maggots and a little bit of bread. That's all we wanted to do. I prefer fishing at Mosquito than fishing at the Cottage Pond, unless I am trying to get frogs to catch big burbot. But other than that, I feel like Mosquito Lake is a more fun place than the little pond, but uh, that may just be me. No, no doubt that the Cottage Pond is probably the safest place to fish with starter gear like we have. Okay, so it's now about four in the morning. Let's go back and try a uh, spot out over here. I did notice that little tench order is up, so if we get lucky on a tench, that could be pretty fun. So we'll put worms right out near those um, those lilies or that moss again and see if we can't live on the edge a little bit and try to get a tench. That would be a big boon to our silver. And this is where we want to fish again. So let's first put our feeder in. We'll go ahead and put maggots on there. Are we close to a hole? We're really not that far away from a hole. Yeah, let's do this first, full cast, and let's just see if we can get lucky on uh, some kind of bream or something out there. But the main thing we want to do is really just right close to the shore. Let's see if that's too deep. Okay, that is way too deep. It did not go out far enough. Let's try this again. Keep worm on it, but see if we can, oh, that is just perfect perfect placement we didn't get snagged thankfully and it's just for variety sake let's put uh, bread on this oh I think we need to press plus and minus to change the depth if you didn't already know to set your bait down a little lower in the water I think in, for the most part I would say you want to kind of get it as close to the bottom as you can uh, I guess that may be different according to what fish you're going after, but you, don't, you know, in, in, in most cases, you don't want the bait just sitting too high up in the water if it's a deeper place that you're fishing. All right, we're getting a bite over here. Maybe this will be our tench order. I 
can't tell you how tempted I am to buy a spin fishing setup instead of my second feeder, but that is crazy because the money we'll make on a second feeder will pay for that spin fishing setup. What I really envision doing on this account as we go through the tutorial, you've seen me float fishing and you know we'll do some more float fishing here and there, but I really kind of see us having two feeders out and then starting to do some practicing, some spin fishing on a low level account, mostly for the um, just getting everyone ready for the new river that's coming out. It's going to be a, a low to mid-level river that's going to really focus on spin fishing as much as anything. So might be nice to do that on this tutorial uh, account as well. And we'll give our feeder a little bit more time if we... Um, don't see something come in we'll just put it near the shore I know we'll catch stuff if we put the feeder near the shore but I just wanted to see if any kind of bream or anything happened to be biting today this nibble has been crazy which if you remember last time we had a long nibble we lost our rig this size 12 hook is a little big I think the smaller ones might have been sold out though I can't remember why we got a 12 it's not it's not ideal for our level or this location all right, we caught something, but it is tiny. Let's see what this is. If it's not something yummy, we'll uh, we'll change locations. Okay, it's a rough. That's actually not bad. Um, let's try it one more time. As we saw last time, if we can get lucky on a big rough, that's worth a lot of silver for uh, for what we're used to at this level. Still getting those crazy nibbles over here, aren't we? Yeah, it makes me very nervous that this is going to be a big fat tinch that's just going to, or, you know, some sort of carp that's just going to snap our line. All right, we're going to try it now. Okay, we're good. We're good. So it's just a gibble. No harm, no foul. Just a gibble. Another good placement there, right near the lilies. Of course, the bamboo rod. So what you don't want to do when you have this little line, because of how short the bamboo pole is, what you don't want to do is have it up high. It needs to be down low. Is that deep enough? Yeah, that's great. It just needs to be right here close to the shore. Wow. That was a quick bite. Ah, oh, it snapped out. Came out. Uh oh, fish got away. Must have had another little rough on there. Oh, nope, never mind. So that fish got away notification, I wonder if that was from if that was from our um, our bamboo rod. It might have been. Alright, there's another rough. Alright, let's try this instead. Just real close to the shore here. Let's see what we do with this. Let's check this. We have bait there, yep. And do we have bait there? We do. So the fish got away must have been from the um, bamboo rod when it was positioned awkwardly. That's a nice gibble. We don't want it that close, I don't think. I think there's a fish on bamboo right now. Let's see if we can still catch it. Little roach, little common roach. All right, is this tightened? Yeah. Okay. So we got a couple markers here. All right, now let's see what this is catching. Whoa. Hey. Looks like an interesting fish. I think that is a bream. It is in fact a bream. It is in fact a bream. Very nice. I like that. 
Gave us a good bit of experience. It's a marker bream. Did you see how hard that was to bring in? What What's this line? 3.1 line. Yeah, it's going to be hard. We don't want bream too much bigger than that. <laughs> we don't want anything too much bigger than that. We really don't. But we do have a little bit of silver in our net now. That is a big old gibble carp. Big old gibble carp. Kind of like this, right next to that log. We seem to be doing pretty well. Decent crucian. So far, no tinch bites, though. That looks like that might be a bream as well. Wow. Another really nice bream, and that was on worm there. And that is going to put us awfully close to level 8. Let's see what we've got here. A little gibble. Okay, looks like another pretty good fish here. In fact, it's actually, it's a tench, and that's going to put us at level 8. It's also going to be really interesting to see about that order. So let's, um, let's go check out the order, and if, if we get that order done, I believe we're going to have enough to, um, to put another, get another feeder in the water which will just make my heart happy to stop using this bamboo float. So I hope that will be uh, an okay plan for you all if we move off of float fishing uh, eventually on this tutorial series. Um, like I said, we may come back around. Um, I am, uh, yeah, just kind of thinking it might be fun to do a little spin fishing. Now it's really slow. Spin fishing at Mosquito and is really slow. Winding it's a little better, but we could start to, you know, I think it would be fun. I, th I think it would just be a fun exercise. 
Um, yeah, we really lucky there. A 10 silver order on that tench. Um, that is definitely what you're looking for. Um, just trying to see if we're even getting close on anything else. We're not. What is this roach? I mean, these rough orders. That is interesting. How much is the rough order? 25 silver, y'all. And we just need three more. That just might be worth going for. Those small rough. We kind of know a good place to catch them, don't we? Okay, so we got a little bit of silver. Um, this is for our second feeder rig. What we need now is a bite indicator. We'll just go right in order here. We need a bite indicator. We may not quite be able to finish setting it up. We need another sinker. Cheap old sinker. We'll do it small one and a hook and then we're set how much silver do we have all right what hook options do we have for those cheap hooks 12 is the can we afford a, more, a nicer hook i think we can and we can give a much smaller hook which will just make sense let's go with 14 or 15. Let's go with 15. Oh, we don't have quite enough. Okay, okay, hold on. Let's sell a fish. I think it's worth 6.9. It's worth getting. This will be our first nice hook. Now, we could obviously lose the hook because of... Um, let's sell the two bream. That's four and a half silver. See how much silver bream are worth? Four and a half silver for two fish. That's probably what the rest of our whole net is worth. It's possible we'll lose the hook, but it's also possible that we'll hold on to the hook for a while and we won't miss fish. So we'll do a size 15. And let's go ahead and set that up. I'm pretty excited about this. And let's put some maggots on. So now we have... So let's go ahead and take apart our bamboo rod so that we get all that hook that hook and stuff back in fact uh let's see we have a 12 small we can put a 16 now on this so we've got smaller hooks that's just going to be smarter right and then what hook is on this should be a pretty small one okay all right so now we want to see if we can finish that rough order uh, for 25 silver because that would just be a huge boon and also just get some good fishing here in good fishing in here is the correct way of saying that yeah so let's try let's try going both feeders just kind of out in the middle. Now it's not very, it's not like super common that we're gonna catch rough during the day. And so we may wanna wait till evening to put them back out there. But first let's just kind of see what happens here. It's still morning. You never know, we might get lucky. I think we probably want to move them closer in we may get more bites on our telestick now for the fact that we are using a smaller hook as well, a more appropriate size hook. This is where we end up just kind of grinding it out on the float rod for now and trying to catch some good fish on this on the feeders and we will 
just give them another few minutes here and move them to um, move them to a closer spot. So I don't know if you can imagine, but having two feeders out really with bells on really does give you the opportunity. I mean, we could just kind of stalk the bank all over this area with our spin fishing if we wanted to. And um, uh, have, a good, have, a good, have a good opportunity to have some fun trying to find some perch and stuff on our spinning as well as consistently you know catching things on the feeder and that's just kind of you want to get your system set up and then you can start trying different things so let's put another point here into feeder rod over spinning rod i think we'll kind of go back and forth until both of those are maxed out i believe all right let's move these it's just been Oh, wow, got a fish on. All right, this might be like a little bream or something. It's very, very sneaky there. Okay, it's just a little gibble. So let's go closer here. I think we'll have a faster bite rate. Do we need to get this? Yeah, I think we do. I don't know what it is, but whoa. This is borderline, guys. That is a borderline. We can't catch that fish, but another big old gibble. All right, let's tighten this one up and see if anything is on this one as well. It's not, so let's pull it in. See, I feel like the bites on the float rod are much faster right now. And I don't know if it's coincidental or if it's because we have gotten the, uh, oh, there's a fish. Because we've gotten the smaller hook on there. We literally may have just had a too big of a hook. There's a little tinch. That is promising. That was not a good cast. Yeah, now we're now we're in business. Get your two feeders going, and suddenly you're in business. Yeah, we're on the tench right now, but we want to be careful. Like we we literally want to catch tench that are about 800 kilos. We 800 grams. Sorry, we don't want to catch too much bigger than that at this point. Yeah, so the tench are out right now, for whatever it's worth. Um, but we've been catching non-markers so far. That could have to do with hook size. We do have really small hooks. But, uh, you know, that's that's what you got to do at this level. You, you just can't go for, go for broke, because you'll end up being broke. I mean, you just, you know, it's a good way to lose reels and rods and all your hooks. Uh, you just need to have appropriate size hooks for where your abilities are. And you still have a chance of hooking into something you can't quite handle. For sure. It can happen. The other thing is, and I'm honestly not great at doing this myself, but anytime you put your line back in, what you should really do, and I, see, I just forgot to do it there. Um, put your friction brake back down because... If you get a big fish on there and you've got a high friction break, it could snap before you even have a chance to pick it up. Uh-oh, there was a fish nibbling and I just picked that up and kind of messed it up there. I think there's a fish on. Okay, maybe not. I'm going to recast it.
there's nothing like really special about this spot guys i mean any spot here would be like this i mean you're just looking for places along the shore at mosquito where you see things like trees in the water the lilies and stuff are a nice indication that fish are going to be around and um just find good spots to put your feeders it's all you know it's really all it's about uh, let's see See, we had our friction break a little high on this one. It was at 21. Something real tasty got on there. It could be trouble. Yeah, we pulled it too soon. Thought I was going to catch him in the act there as he was sort of dancing away, but did not happen. So, winding, huh? We need a we need a net to catch fish, and we need a spinning rig if we're going to do spin fishing. Those are the two things on the table that we want to save for. I do know we've got a really cheap hook on here. <laughs> and you know, if you really want to go hard into float fishing, then you want to uh, put points into fishing with a telescopic rod. I mean, it's as simple as that. You're, you're going to have so much more control of fish and accurate casting. Uh, you know, if that's what we were wanting to do, that's what, you know, that's where our skill points would be. Because it's not what I'm wanting to do, I'm just kind of leaving those skill points alone. But you, you would have a less frustrating time float fishing once you started getting the skill points into some of those categories there. it over that log real quick a lot of gibbles in this area which is kind of nice I think gibbles are maybe worth a little bit more than the crucians nailed him Yeah, not, not as frustrating now that we're not having to use the, um, the bamboo rod, right? It's a lot more enjoyable of an experience. And if using the, the bamboo rod is, is, you know, too stressful, you could just um, purchase a second starter telescopic rod right from the start. I didn't want to do that because I wanted to get our first feeder rig as quickly as we could, but I mean that would not be, that would not be a terrible option, honestly. They're not that expensive, and you don't have to buy that much else because you don't need a spinning reel. So, you know, that's another way we could have gone about it. So that's a neat white bream there. It's not, um, it's not a marker unfortunately, but still a cool little fish. So it's getting late enough. I think I want to start trying to get the rough again. And we're going to position these directly out towards there so that we can uh, hopefully. Look how that. I did not mean to pick that up. Look how the um, bells are a little messed up there. 
Is that better? Yeah, that got him better. Let's see if there's anything on this rod right now. Not yet. We won't move it till we catch something. Or at least we'll try to wait to see if we catch something. Nice. Little roach. Another little roach. I'm going to switch to bread on this one for a little bit. See how it does here with bread. It's going to take tench off the table, most likely. But let's just see how it does. So now we're back into the crucian. Because of the time of day it is, I guess we'll go. We'll go worm a little bit more. Because we might get another tinch there. Okay, that's disappointing. Uh, you will see me doing this a lot, especially when it's um, possible that we could be catching a rough. We will check the lines pretty often. just to see what's up. fast with that grab, I guess. Surprising how long it's been we since we've had a bite on this feeder. This one I can kind of see because we put, a, put it out there in the middle a little early, but... This one over here, I just would have expected a little quicker bite. Oof. This might be a little tricky. I'll be honest. <laughs> this might be a little tricky. Not the worst thing in the world there that that fish got away in the sense that I'm not sure if we would have uh, been able to stop it from spooling us. Before we put this back out there. A lot of 
my nibbles here, but the bobber is still standing. Mm. It's way out there, though, isn't it? Can be a long way to pull it in if it's a big fish. And really, we may have walked the wrong way. I was trying to get to the beach over there by camp. The idea was I was thinking in my head, like, okay, we just gotta try to buy ourselves some time. So that this fish can wear itself out. I think this is a rough. I had to guess. Yeah, okay. Clearly that's what we're going for. Uh, yeah. Talking about borderline. Oh, it's snagged. Ugh. torn off good thing that was a cheap hook huh um a 12 no we'll just use a rusty hook for now well, that is disappointing the most disappointing part is the feather float we're now going to be using uh, you know what do we need to reset the placement of the hook. No, it's fine. So the snag is actually what got us. That is disappointing. All right, let's check everything out. We're almost out of maggots, although they are pretty cheap to refill on maggots. Oh, it looks like something's on the feeder here, doesn't it? It's got some movement to it. A little sleeper. Yeah, okay. We're going hard in on the rough. This will, will require patience, though, because we're going to have to take check them pretty frequently a lot of fish with that rusty hook to be fair Let's check them. First, let's just. Mm, my gut tells me there's nothing on either one. We'll give them a little bit more time to soak.
slow march around the lilies. First of all, we had the friction break up way too high. Go find out exactly what we're needing in terms of um, that rough order because I don't remember. Don't remember if the real small ones count. I think the 40 grams do, but I doubt the 20 ones do. So let's just double check those so we'll know exactly when we finish it, if we can finish it. Oh, it does count. 20 to 44. We just need one more in that size. And we actually just need one more crucian as well. I think we're going to go ahead and get another uh, really cheap hook. Unfortunately, that's the smallest we can do. How much are the cheap? Yeah, we'll do a cheap one of these too. A little waste of silver possibly you could you could argue but it um, it actually just annoys me so much to have a feather float out there I'm just not as comfortable with it so it's worth 0.9 silver to get uh, to get the real deal out there to also not be using a rusty hook is a good thing. Now we're back to a big hook. Might slow down our bite ratio and it might also get us in trouble. But Alright, we just need one more really small rough and then we hit what is a pretty nice order. We also just need one more small crucian, to be honest.
got it. I've got something on there. This might be it. Uh, this might be a little big. I don't know. No, it could be. Could be it. Yep, that's perfect. We just don't really want to take the chance of the order going away. So we're going to be really aggressive here. Next time we get a little nibble, we're pulling this one in. And we're going to go turn that order in. Was aggressive. <laughs> Did I read that wrong, or is it 25 silver for these little rough? That is a, a crazy cafe order. I guess that's what you should do. Just look and see. Are any of these orders crazy? <laughs> what, uh... What is going on? 25 silver for five little rough. All right, if we were to put a spin, a spinning rod together, what are we looking at? Ten to thirty, so that means you could only put really small stuff on there, which is fine. That's all we would use it for. So we would need twenty three silver, thirty three silver, a little bit of line. And then something like that. So about 40 silver, to be honest. About 40 silver is what we would need. I hear my bells going off. Two kilo rod though, it's gonna be tough getting fish in on it. What is this? Alright, we're out of that bait. Marker bream. I don't know. Maybe not quite. What would be nice if it was that white bream? Common roach. Uh, Okay. 
sure how much that crucian order is worth, but it's probably just four or five, six silver, something like that. But it's for some of the crucian in that range are not markers, so it's definitely a nice little order if we can sort of luck into it. We've got something nibbling on one of our feeders. You can see from the ripple effect at the line. There it goes. Oh, there's a nice rough. Another rough. Like now that I have two feeders, it's just about impossible for me to be patient on the float, to be honest. Wow. There was no doubt about that bite, was there? I don't think I've seen a common roach order uh, today, but I could have overlooked it. So I feel like there's a, oops, I feel like there's a fish on one of these, but yeah, I just thought I saw a little bit of line movement, even though the bells weren't going off yet. So we're actually catching rough at a higher rate over here along the shore. To be fair, it's a little later in the evening though, so that is another reason why that could be happening. Oh, this might be a looks like a crucian. This seems like a really nice little spot for our feeders. Nice little spot. So what we want to start doing is making bread um, for bait to level it up. Um, we could do potatoes since we can go to winding as well, but we basically want to get to pearl barley. <clears throat> Um, that is our that is our early goal here in terms of crafting. Oops. So we want to be able to make pearl barley. Really thought there was going to be a fish on there. I don't think I ever tightened them up. There is a fish on here. Be a rough. Be a rough. Be a rough. Because that's going to be a mar oh it's smaller than I thought. Okay, never mind. I really thought that was going to be a marker rough. So let's see how hard we, how high we have to get in harvesting baits for pearl barley. It's twenty percent. So that's a lot of making. Um, again, that's why you want to get a shovel. Maybe we get a shovel. <laughs> Maybe we get a shovel. Then we don't have to worry about worms. You know, um, we can keep float fishing a little longer if it means starting to dig up worms and level up our bait crafting. That's a nice rough. See, I'm wondering if we're gonna have a chance at that at that other rough order. Let's just catch rough as long as we can here. Just a good reminder there, just because it's wandering away with your bait doesn't mean that's a good time to uh, to pull it. So 
So even after the order, we've still got three. See, this 72 one and maybe the 53, but the 72 one for sure I feel like might be in the higher category. But what did we need like, did we need six of those or five again? I don't, I don't remember. We've got a bite on here. It just hasn't taken it yet. Hopefully it will though. We'll watch the line. Ooh, unexpected. Not a marker, but I really like that, that fish, the eyed. We'll keep a little slack in there. Sometimes that's a good way to see if you have bites too. Although I, I have wondered if having it tight increases your bite rate. I'm not sure about that. So we're level eight and a half. We've made some good progress here. Um, we're going to be at a pretty natural like end point of the episode soon, I think. But this has been good. We got our second feeder rod in place. There we go. And we got a really nice rough order that's going to help us. Uh, there's another nice one. Uh, purchase our next uh, next surprise, which I'm, at this point might be a shovel. To be honest, I'm just still sort of. I'm not 100% sure, but still leaning that way. And then we'll do the spinning rod after that. Shovel's almost 40 silver, though. It is so much silver at this point in the game. Um, but it bothers me. Like, I, I don't... I'm not sure that it's worth us going to winding until we open up... Until we open up Pearl Barley. And so, the quicker we can get to leveling up crafting baits, which the cheapest way to do that is just to invest in that shovel... True overnight hours. Now the sleepers show up. It's amazing um, how long this worm went without getting a bite. Oh, is that too deep? Looks like it's set too deep. We have 42 fish in the net. Some of them are markers. That looks like a good bite. That is not a rough. Another sleeper. If I remember from the last episode, those big sleepers aren't bad silver. Sleepers all the time now. 
Just sleeper after sleeper. Whoa. It took it a far long way. Float fishing's up to 13%. <clears throat> go something's happening at least probably another sleeper hmm. some early morning crucian I'll tell you that I'll take it. Do we still have a fish nibbling or is that did that ruin it? It looks like that ruined it. Let's get it a little closer. So we can see what's happening. Fish are starting to come out now. That might be a tinch. Is that a crucian? Wow. That is a big crucian. Nice rough. over 50 I've got four over 50 right now pulled it but it looks like the fish nibble is still going on
messing this up, don't we? So, um, I haven't mentioned this recently in our, <laughs> in our, uh, in these videos, but if you are looking for a good place to come hang out, we've got 71 players right now in the channel that's my dogs associated with my stream that we do just pretty much daily fishing stream and a lot of cool people in there uh, from high level very skilled players that know more than I do and all the way down to brand new players that are just getting out just getting started and a lot of good helpful advice is uh, talked about and every once in a while we give away bait and just kind of send people stuff in the chat so Welcome to come join us if you're looking for a home to pass the time while you're catching the big fish. And someone had brought up a good point. They were asking about skill points, if they were only going to get one per level. And I was clarifying for them, you get one per level until you hit level 20, and then you start to get two per level. And... At level 30, you get three per level, and presumably at 40, you get four per level. So once you hit level 20, for all the levels past 20, at least until you get to 30, you'll be getting two skill points per level. So you really start to fill out your skill tree as you get a little bit higher level, which works out really nice. And then you can start to uh, look at doing some more creative things with your skill points. The other thing I'll remind you, if, if uh, you don't know about this, you have one free reset. And I always tell people, as tempting as it may be at different points in the game, don't reset your skills till you at least get to level 20. And I even think waiting a little past that is worthwhile because past that free uh, reset that you get, it's gonna cost you gold, which gold costs real money. And so, I encourage you to be pretty certain about what you're doing before using that skill reset. Um, now, occasionally we do get skill resets in the game. Anytime the skills are changed, remember this game is still being developed. So anytime things go, get an overhaul in terms of the skills, we usually will get a refund of skill points. So you may get one just through that method as well. But in terms of your free official skill reset, I would save it until you've played long enough to have a really good idea of what types of fishing you enjoy the most, and even within each category. So let's use feeder fishing or bottom fishing as an example. Early on, you may start using Pattern Oster, which is unlocked at 25%. And you may say, you know what? Pattern Oster is great. I've caught trophies using Pattern Oster. This is, I just love it. I'm gonna put skill points in Pattern Oster. But when you get a little higher level, you might start using Loop Rig and you might find yourself in the same position that I did, which was to say, Loop Rig is made for me. Loop Rig helps the fish to stay on longer so I can take care of other things and not have to worry about that fish getting off as quickly. And it seems to be really effective at catching the fish. And so I want to have points in Loop Rig. In fact, I'm probably not ever going to use Pattern Oster since I like Loop Rig so much. So for me, points in Loop Rig made sense. But I didn't know that until, wow, look at that freaking rough. I didn't know that until I had experimented with several things. So. Um, that's why I always say save your free skill reset for as long as you can. So we're not going to make the same mistake we did last time. If this starts to spool us, we'll move to the right. It looks like it's not going to though. This is not that big a fish. It just fought a little bit at first. Now we are fine to get it in and I uh, can't wait to see what this is. Wow. Big old gibble. Big old gibble. All right. All right. We've gone a little longer in this episode than I intended, but the fishing, honestly, in this spot has turned out to be really good. And um, I'm sort of fascinated with these this rough order. So, we, But we probably ought to go check and see if it's even still alive. It might have had a timer on it. And it might already be gone. 
There's another little fish. All right, so let's let's do that. Let's go check out and see where we stand. I think it's actually on the other one. It might not be on either one. Just a nibble. Let's give it another second and see if we get the bite. And there it is. No idea what that is. Miniature gibble. All right. So we have one worm left. <laughs> if we're not going to... Uh, get the shovel. We're certainly going to have to make another trip to the cottage pond to get some more worms. We did craft some bread, but we need more worms. I think the bread is fine, but I think worms help you target certain fish at certain times of day. And so for me, a little more interesting. Rough and tench and bream even. Uh, and that's also why I think maggots are really good as well. Let's look at this order. Oh, uh, we need six over 45. We're only halfway there, but that is 45 silver. How tempting is that? Ugh. We're nowhere near only common roach order. Either common roach order. We did not get that last crucian. That would have been for six silver. I mean, that would have been okay, but it's, you know, it is what it is. Let's see where we're at on silver. So we have 27 silver. The shovel cost, I think, basically 40 Shovel costs 38. Now, we might be able to save a little bit at winding on it, but it might not be in stock. I don't know. 51 silver. What a good day of fishing. All right, let's look at the price on those. Yeah, it's those rough. I hate to say this, but it's not the worst strategy ever to target rough when you're fishing at Mosquito at an early level. A rough is never going to break your gear. <laughs> and... Um, it's not bad silver, especially if those cafe orders come up. Okay, so let's let's take that silver. We're at 79 silver. We actually could put the um, we could put the spin fisher to spin fishing thing together, but I think this is the way we're gonna go. All right, so now we have a shovel. Let's show you how the shovel works before we uh, call this episode uh, call this episode. So you can dig just pretty much anywhere. It doesn't actually matter that much where you're digging or what the ground looks like. And this is what you're going for. So we just got two worms from digging there. And you see it also leveled it up harvesting baits. So at this point, if we're not spin fishing, there's red worm even. So now we just got one red worm, which we haven't even had yet. If we're not spin fishing, if we're float fishing, if we've got feeder fishes in, this is what we'll be doing. We're already up to 1% harvesting baits. 1.2%. Now, the only thing you watch is it uses your energy. And so at this level, I'm not going to be able to afford to buy, you know, a lot of coffee and tea and stuff to get me more energy. So we'll just shovel until our energy gets real low. And then we'll take a break and let our energy come back up. And we'll keep shoveling. But this will be our new task is just to shovel, shovel, shovel. When our, especially when our feeder rigs are in. Or if we're waiting on a bite on our uh, telescopic rod, our float fishing. You see our energy is the top bar there on the bottom left. I'm not sure that in this video series, and we're already up to 2%. I'm not sure if in this video series, um, I've actually talked about what those bars stand for. So in the very bottom left, you see our level and a circular indication of how close we are to leveling up again. So we're 75% through level 8. And then if you look at the four bars, we have the top one being energy, which is what we're running out of now. The second bar is our food level, so how hungry our fisherman is. The third uh, bar is our life or our health meter. So far, not a lot has been done with that in game. The only thing you'll notice taking your life away a little bit is if you drink too much alcohol. Speaking of alcohol, the fourth bar is your comfort meter. And usually it's going to sit right around there, a little over halfway. If it gets super hot 
or if it starts pouring down rain, your comfort level will go down. And the thing that um, most effectively brings up your comfort level is going to be alcohol. So um, we'll talk about this later in the series, I'm sure. But basically, it, there are certain types of alcohol in particular. There's one type that you craft called mulled wine that is really good at bringing your comfort level up. And then to bring your energy up, the best things are going to be things like coffee and tea, which again you craft, as well as soda. There's a type of honey you get from Sura that's good. Um, and cra uh, not crackers, uh, uh, candy bars are decent at giving you a little boost of energy as well. So there's different ways you can raise your levels. So we're up to 3% harvesting baits. That was a good start. So let's look at our baits now so I can show you. You know, we were down to very little worms. We're already up to 20, and we got that red worm, which is kind of fun. I love red worms. You get those very slowly by, by digging, obviously, but um, you do eventually get there. Okay, so after the shovel, we're left with 41 silver. I think the next purchase we're going to make is going to be a spinning setup. So let's kind of look at that. I'm not going to actually purchase any of it yet. Um, but let's look at it so we can be thinking about it before next episode. The beginner spinning rod, spinning rod is going to cost us 23 silver. Now, the other thing you could argue is to save for this one. It's so much better. I mean, we're not going to be able to... We're really going to be taking chances fishing on the starter one. But I actually really like the S66H. It's stronger. It's got a 7 kilo load capacity. Um, you could go all the way up to the Lacerti on that rod and be doing okay. Um, so I don't know. That's what we've got to think of. Do we spend 23 silver so that we can at least start? catching it's going to be a struggle i mean you know even a one kilo perch is going to s really stink you're going to feel it on um on these little rigs i mean if we've got 4.5 kilo load capacity if we're going to put braided line on there 4.5 kilo braided line and then maybe we get a yeah, we don't want one of those. I'm just trying to see if there's even a leader we would want to use. A 2.3 leader. We don't want a six kilo leader. That's out of stock. It's eight anyway. Yeah, so I don't even know if there's a leader we could put on there. So we really, it's just not ideal, you know. But anyway, if we're going to do the starter, we're looking at 2350, 34 silver, 34, 40. We're not that far away. Basically, 40. 47 silver, so just a little bit more fishing, and we can put our spin fishing thing together. Okay, as always, thanks for watching. Um, this one ended up going just about an hour and 20 minutes, so that's what we've ended up. We've been been between an hour and hour and 20 minutes several times, but uh, yeah, hope it's helpful. Uh, hope to see you again soon. Come join us on our Twitch channel or uh, here at YouTube. I appreciate all the support. Thanks so much.